All right, here's a way to get CC3 characters to work with the Advanced Locomotion System version 4. Advanced Locomotion System is a powerful and flexible movement system that's in Epic's permanently free collection on the marketplace. You should get it! To use ALS version 4, you need to be running Unreal Engine 4.24 at least. If you're not, you'll be on ALS version 3 and that'll be different. So start a project with ALS. Save it wherever you want. In Character Creator 3, go Plugins and Character Creator 3 Auto Setup, then Browse Files. Get into the Unreal folder, then inside the Auto Setup folder for 4.24 folder. Copy the content and plugin folders from here and paste them inside the ALS project folder you just made. Content will merge and plugins will create its own folder. For funsies, make sure your character is in the Unreal Engine 4 Open A pose. You're gonna go to Content, then Motion, then choose the pose. Shaba! That looks right. Now you're gonna export a nice FBX. You want an Unreal preset, duh. Include the mesh and the motion, use the current pose, and exclude hidden faces. I'm ignoring level of detail for now because I just wanna get my skeleton set up for iteration purposes. Now, you're gonna export, man, it'll be great, man. Save it somewhere, it doesn't matter, who cares, but for real, you should have some sort of source control, but you should check that out elsewhere. Now, I want you to open your UE4 project file. You'll notice you have new plugins available. You should check those out. For me, the CC3 auto setup is auto enabled, but the Reillusion tutorials always mention it does not enable by default. I don't know, it's up to you, check it out. Live your life on the edge, I guess, and don't double check. Who cares? Fantastic. Now we're gonna organize our files where they live. Give your exported FBX a home, keep it clean. I like to add a folder somewhere that makes sense and tell myself it's for characters, but you can do whatever floats your boat, hombre. Now here's where I get spicy. I like to make a folder in here that's for the specific character I'm currently importing. I know, madness. Now get this, remember that FBX? You'll drag and drop that self same FBX into here. Just the FBX, nothing else matters. Forget you ever saw it. Don't pay any attention to that stuff. Pay attention now. You want to enable the HQ shader because that's better. These import settings are super important. Ha, <laughs> get it? So you're importing your mesh, yeah? You'll want to use T0 as reference pose. Import those morph targets. Import those animations. Use animated time. Use default sample rate. Do not create materials and uncheck import textures. That's a nice safe way to import your CC3 stuff into UE4. Now, through the power of magic and software, once everything gets inside your project file, that CC3 auto setup plugin you copied over will do all the heavy lifting for you. It'll make everything look fantastic, and everyone will love you and be impressed, and finally you'll have value, your parents will be proud. I like to contemplate life while the shaders compile, but I'll fast forward that for you and get to the good stuff. And we're back, okay, let's get serious. If you do this part wrong, there are plenty of ways to crash the program or have Character Creator 3 look and behave really crappy. Typically, people are left with issues like this, where the jaw doesn't follow the correct bone hierarchy. This, for example, will happen if you retarget your CC3 character to the ALS skeleton. You'll have the option to copy over all your CC3 bones and morphs, but even though everything appears to be parented correctly, it just won't work. This can be confusing to fix, so it's better to just not have it happen in the first place. You want a nice, clean, working character, and since CC3 is very complex and powerful character base to be working from, and you're gonna do it a lot with all of your characters, you might as well make ALS work with that, rather than the other way around. Always keep in mind, though, there are so many ways to do everything, and each way has benefits and drawbacks, so I'm just gonna show you an effective way that's right down the middle of the road. It's up to you to decide if it's good or not. I don't care. On your ALS skeleton, there are lots of virtual bones you need to be mindful of. On your CC3 skeleton, there are lots of morphs and CC bones. So, duplicate your ALS skeleton. This might help you in the future. Retarget the original ALS skeleton to your CC3 skeleton that was made when you imported your FBX. Now you've stolen a skeleton, so the anim men won't work. But you'll notice this is the fastest and easiest way to get all of your animations working. 
Normally, in the other methods of retargeting, you have to manually duplicate and retarget everything in the actions folder and manually swap mantling in certain transitions. Doing it this way, everything's just there and it just works. The trade-off is this though. You don't have to manually change over those animations, but you have to manually add in all the virtual bones and that can be confusing, so pay attention. On your Animan skeleton, right-click LHSIK handgun, rename, and hit Control c to copy the name. On your CC3 skeleton, right-click on hand L, go add virtual bone, the target bone is IK handgun. You'll rename that and paste in with Control v the proper copied name. Now, Copy LHS IK hand R, right click on your first virtual bone there. Target bone is IK hand R. Rename it. Rinse and repeat for the right hand. Copy RHS IK handgun from the Animan so you don't make any spelling mistakes. Right click hand R and target IK handgun. Paste in the proper name. Copy RHS IK hand L. Right click on RHS IK handgun and target IK hand L. Simple! So that's the basics. The issue is that with the next virtual bones for the foot IK, they're just as squirrely to parent correctly. I won't show the copy and pasting steps now to speed this up, I'll just show the parenting structure. Right click IK foot L. Add virtual bone to IK foot L. That's your IK foot L offset. Your IK knee target L, you right click on IK foot L, and the target bone is calf L. That's the one that gets people. Your foot target L, you right click on IK foot root, and the target is IK foot L. Got it? Make sure you're copying and pasting the names correctly. Naming something properly is how it's referenced. If you don't copy the name properly, it won't work. Now everything's the same, except for it's on the right side now. IK foot R offset on IK foot R, targeting IK foot R, rename. IK knee target R on IK foot R, targeting calf R, rename. Foot target R on IK foot root, targeting IK foot R, rename. Now do the curves virtual bone on the root, targeted to the root. Now. Duplicate your Animan character BP. I do this to keep it nice and fresh, original copy, so I can tweak and wreck my own copy. Next, duplicate your ALS base character BP. Again, this just keeps me nice and safe so I can make mistakes. Inside your ALS Animan character BP duplicate, go to class settings and change the parent class to your ALS base character BP duplicate. It's okay to reparent it because nothing's different at this point, nothing will break. Go to your mesh and change it to your character creator 3 mesh. Make sure to compile, always compile. Right about here, you'll start to notice your character's legs might look a little funky, but generally it's working. In the event graph, just break the connection between the M key and the mannequin mesh change. That stuff won't work with what we've done so far. Delete the visual meshes component here, who needs it? Now remove that update coloring system from the event tier. We, we just don't need it! I, I like to leave stuff like that to the side. For now, just as a reminder of my transgressions uh, against other people's code. Ah, compile! Boom! Ugh, oh god, already drag your character blueprint onto the scene. That looks about right. Fantastic. If you press play, everything works. But you'll notice we broke the Anim Man examples. That's because we stole their skeleton. If you want them to work, you can retarget back to them. That's up to you. But now this is your character creator 3 base, and presumably you'll rebuild those AI characters as CC3 characters. So Godspeed on your journey, friend. You'll figure it out. Your ragdoll will be broken because we haven't dealt with physics retargeting yet. If you use it, you'll fall through the floor or something. I don't know, I'm not your mom. We'll get to that in a minute. But you'll notice the jaw and chin stuff is fixed and it all follows the correct bone hierarchy. That's fantastic. Next up, you'll notice your feet might, emphasis on might, float above the floor and your knees are weirdly bent. Or your feet will be in the floor and your knees will be too long. Something like that. Or maybe you're perfect and everything will be perfect. I don't know. But 
if something is wrong here, like what hap what's happening with mine where the knees are bent and the feet are floating, um, this is because of reasons. It will depend on how close your character was to the animant proportions and whatever, who cares? Let's make it better. Open that ALS anim BP. So there's actually quite a few ways to do this fix, but here's a way that works. Open up foot IK. You'll find it under the animation layers tab. I think I haven't double checked that. I'm pretty sure that's where it is, but whatever, you'll find it. It's just, just open this, open the foot IK. In here, uh, find the apply IK to feet. Click on one of those yellow boys and at the right, you can change the X factor of the effector location. I just trial and errored mine. The magic number was five and minus five. Um, I actually haven't looked into it enough to understand why one's negative and one's positive. Literally, I also don't care. It kind of cognitively makes sense, but uh, the magic numbers were five and minus five. If you go too far, you'll either raise your knee even more or you'll lower your foot through the floor. Hit compile, bam. Something else I like to do is check this little box here so I can see these values and edit them later. It also serves as a reminder of what I'm tweaking. Now, everything looks better. Yeah, the feet hit the floor and the knees aren't bent. That's sweet. Since life is hard, there's still a lot of uh, tweaking to do. And there are many ways of doing this that you got to decide, does this method really work for you or does this cause you different problems? You'll notice that taller characters might have their feet fall through the floor now if they're using the same anim BP and skeleton, whereas shorter characters, they might still float a little bit. This short guy, you can see his knees locking a bit too much, so there's a slightly different fix for a character this size. But for now, this works. I'll deal with those improvements later. So I've got more characters in here now. Here's how you do that. It's super easy. It takes like three seconds. Export your character like before. Make um, a folder in your UE4 project. Drag them in, HQ shaders before. Since you already did the FBX import, it'll remember your settings and all that's different now is you just make sure to select your retargeted skeleton rather than having uh, that there read none and creating a new skeleton. This character will import all targeted to your fancy skeleton that you already put all the virtual bones on and it'll be a proper character creator three skeleton. Make sure you've got all the right FBX settings just to be sure, bingo bango bongo. Now this step, again, there are so many ways to do this and different reasons to do each method. What I'm doing here is duplicating my blueprint for each character, renaming it, and then I'm swapping the mesh. Now you drag it out and you can possess it and play with this character as well. I do it like that because that helps me for reasons uh, but that might not be the best method. For now, it works, and it's easy to revert or adapt it later. So you want to have ragdoll physics, you greedy son of a gun. You want everything, don't you? Okay, honestly, you can just delete all of your character's physics assets that were created and go replace reference, and then select the animan or mannequin physics asset. See, it works for her, blip, blap, blap. It works for him, bang, bong, bong. It works for the kid, flip, flap, flop. It works for this guy, dooby doo, and this dude, bingo, bango. There's some stretching, that's because of reasons. Nothing's perfect, uh, you can polish that up on your own. Remember how we disabled the mannequin mesh change thingy? Well, that's just because it wouldn't work with the mannequin mesh. But now that you have other characters in here, you can use it on them, and it works fine. Here's a fun way I use it right now, just because. Go into your Animan character BP, rehook up that M key press, drag off of the new mesh node on that set skeletal mesh function and go promote to variable. Make this variable public. I named this something memorable, like who are you? The eternal question we should all ask ourselves. Now, uh, that who are you defaults to the mannequin. That's no good, I don't want it. Default it to one of your characters, perfect. Now in the level editor, you can click on your dude and in that details panel there, you can just select who they are from any one of your meshes. Now hit play. And when you hit the M key, you'll swap meshes. Everything works, but it'll work best if the characters are the exact same proportions. If they're not, doing this exact thing will squash or stretch your character a little bit. But you know what? This works. If you want to use this functionality, you can polish and tweak it and make it your own. There's many ways to do this, so, you know, this is just an idea. It just shows you can get that core functionality of the ALS system working, uh, if you so choose. And now, if you want your cast to have the AI features the Animan originally had when you first started this ALS V4 project, in this level, you gotta move them inside that blue area. That's because that's where the nav mesh is. You could make the nav mesh bigger. You could move your dudes in there. You could move the nav mesh, whatever helps you sleep at night. 
Remember to change their overlay state and inputs from the detail window of the level editor. Change that per character and you're good to go. And it kind of does this and everyone moves around and it's great, yeah. I'll leave it here, I guess, and, and just point out one last thing. Notice how every character's arms are set exactly, and I mean exactly like the main skeleton you used. Yeah, so they're using the exact numbers. In here, you'll notice it looks weird. Uh, when you play, it won't look as weird, and the exact location of the held objects in the overlay system aren't 100% perfect, but you can deal with those things later once you get to adding new overlay layers and blah, blah, blah. See what I'm saying? Like, doing it this way, there's not much that you can't redo or undo or tweak or change. It's, it's a fairly flexible system for your CC3 characters. So anything that isn't completely what you want right now at this moment, well, that's up to you. It's up to your project. Figure it out. Change it, tweak it. Uh, but with this exact setup, you can really do basically anything that you want. Just use this as your launching off point. So, anyone watching, um, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? Did this work for you? Did it not work? Let me know. I took a ton of this information out of the ALS V4 Discord channel. Big thanks to the people there. That's the best spot for information and questions. So you got to stop by that Discord uh, server and get going. So thank you guys very much. All right, bye.